Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-20. Previously on the Bard's podcast, our heroes landed on the northern shore and were met by a group of brigands disguised as fishermen. After a surprise attack, the group was victorious and managed to capture one of their assailants. Unfortunately, they discovered the disguised men had killed the fishermen residing in the area. We now pick up an hour later, where the party is still on the shoreline. Sweat poured off Grish and Omel's foreheads as they dug deeper into the sandy ridge. Phidias walked up and the men stopped their labors. Anything? asked Omel. No, responded the gnome. He's not saying anything despite Yolanda's efforts. Efforts? asked the Zenobian. Phidias chuckled and nodded. She's not nearly as nice as you two would be. I do not want that man tortured, was the stern warning from the Knight of Bacchus as he pointed a finger at the rogue. I wouldn't exactly call it torture yet, was the response. The warrior began to get out of the hole that they had dug for the bodies when Grish stopped him. She's a lot of things, said the cleric, but I don't see her torturing anyone. He smiled and continued with, but they would certainly prefer torture. Omel stepped back down but yelled to Phidias, who was walking away, Call for the boat and get him out of here. The gnome nodded his head and headed back to the rest of the group. Grish tossed his makeshift shovel aside and wiped his brow. I think the hole is big enough, my friend, as he climbed out, offering a hand to Sir Omel. The two locked eyes. Are you my friend? asked Omel. Grish, with his hand still extended, was puzzled, but nodded in the affirmative. Aye, I am your friend, he said. The Knight of Bacchus took the large cleric's hand and was pulled out of the hole. I'm sorry, I wasn't sure and I had to ask, said the warrior, as he patted the sand off himself. An exasperated Grish huffed out a, Why would you even have to ask, brave knight? Have I not proven myself yet through all that we have been through? Olvel put his hands on his hips and looked down at his feet before speaking. Grish, you are one of the most bravest people I have ever fought with. Every one of us appreciates your assistance. But my teacher used to tell me that everything before but is just horseshit, replied Grish. Omel chuckled and nodded. I too have heard the same piece of advice, my friend. You are a valuable member of the group. The but I was referring to involved your strange behavior since we returned to Saydown. Strange, quipped Grish. The knight nodded. Yes, you've been very quiet and kept to yourself more so than before. We've all noticed it, and we're all concerned. The cleric began to speak, but the knight quickly held up his hand to stop him. Your business is your own. If you don't want us meddling, we can live with that. As your friends, we want to know if there's anything we can do for you to help you out with any predicaments. The cleric thought for a moment, biting his lip. I respect that, Sir Elmo. I do. I appreciate your concern as well as the others. My apology for my moodiness. I just have to work out a few things. Is that acceptable? Smiling and nodding, the knight clapped him on the back, saying, More than, my friend. Hey, ladies, was shouted out by Yolanda as she approached the pair. If you two are done smooching, we may want to bury the dead sometime today. The pair of men scowled and rapidly stepped away from each other, clearing their throats. Yolanda rolled her eyes and moved to the pile of bodies. Harris, the mage, and Brother Stance of the Verte Order quickly approached to help. As the last of the bodies went into the pit, Phidias sauntered up holding a large wineskin. What are you drinking? asked the monk. Water, was the gnome's reply. I'm thirsty after loading that jackass into the boat. 
Grish quickly swiped the water skin with his big hand and offered O'Mel the first drink. The cleric scolded the gnome. Really? Pushing a bound man into a boat was hard work? The knight finished his swig and gave the skin back to the cleric, who chugged heartily and spread some water onto his sunburnt face. With the group in a circle, they discussed their options. Well, we have the bandits' horses, pointed out Brother Stance. That will save us some time, added Harris. What direction should we take, asked Sir Omel. Well, started Yolanda, the horses' tracks come from the north, and another set going north that appear to be more recent. If the mysterious noble came with his thugs, he may have left after the fishermen were slain. So I vote north. The rest of the group shook their heads in agreement, but stopped when Grish bowed his head and said, Wait. Silence fell over the group as they waited for the cleric to continue. There... There's something else? The mage looked at him quizzically and asked, What is it, holy man? The Zenobian mulled over his response for nearly a full minute before speaking. As the others watched intently, he relayed the private meeting with the Denali monarch. While everyone stood in stunned silence, Grish attempted to read them, hoping he would not see betrayal in their eyes. Yolanda cleared her throat before speaking. So you're saying that the main defensive point for our kingdom is... Heartless, interjected Phidias. He continued with, that is so cool. So if we can find the thing's heart, we can see it move. Stance, Omel, and Harris looked on pensively before the monk spoke. I think what he means is the country is open to attack, and with that behemoth being operationally challenged? Grish nodded, still concerned that the king's opinion that they were spies was correct. Well, we gotta find that heart, said the mage. Omel nodded and added, We need to find it quickly. No offense to your naval forces, but having that golem thing working seems to be a necessary situation. The cleric exhaled, secure that his opinion of his friends were correct, that they had not been traitors, and the king was wrong. Yes, and apparently the thief came to the Northlands. Stance affirmed, we need to work on finding this heart and soon. Yolanda was deep in thought and finally spoke. King Pellet thinks these guys are spies, doesn't he? The corners of the cleric's mouth turned down and he nodded. But I know you are not, he added. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.